In this video, I'm going to explain why I think that ZBLL, ZBLS is useless. ZBLS is an ALG set that is used to orient all of your last layer edges while solving your final F2L case. But the fact is that you can do this intuitively, and it's not very difficult. There's five different possibilities you could have, depending on how many good and bad edges you can have. You can have four good edges, you can have three good edges, you can have two good edges, you can have one good edge, or you can have all bad edges. If you don't understand what a good and bad edge is, I have a video on that, and you can follow the link here to check it out. I have covered something similar to this in another video, which I suppose I will also link here, that uh, I explained how to do this throughout F2L, which you can do, but also it's quite easy to use your last slot alone to do it. So the first case we'll cover is when you have four good edges. So I have four good edges here. And what you want to do for this one is just preserve all those edges by not using any F or B moves in your solution or rotating. So you want to solve it rotationless without using F or B moves. So this one, it's really simple. You pair them up like that and insert them. And I didn't use any F or B moves and that kept all my edges good. You could also have the case where you have three good edges and one bad edge. And this is something I have covered before and it's exactly the same what you do. So you want to put the bad edge in this slot like so, and then all you have to do is rotate, and that will orient this edge and keep all of the other edges good. And now you can solve your F2L pair just like we did for the four good edges case using no F or B moves and no rotations. And that will keep all your edges good. You can also have the case where you have two good edges and two bad edges. And what we do for this one is different from what we did for three edges. So what we do is we take one of the bad edges and we insert it into the slot just like we did for three edges. But instead of rotating, what we're going to do is we're also going to orient the other bad edge. So we want to find that other bad edge, and we want to put it right here in this UF position with the other bad edge in the slot. And then you just do a sledgehammer, which is R prime, F, R, F prime. And that will orient all of your edges. And then you can solve your F2L case rotation list. You could also have one of the more unfortunate cases where you have one or no good edges. In this case, I just have one good edge. And you could have tried to influence your good edges during the last two slots, but if you didn't, that is okay. What we do is we kind of just break it down into a 2, a 3, or a 4 case. So for here, I have a bad edge already in the slot, and I have this one here, and I'm just going to do a sledgehammer to orient those two, which now gives me the 3 case. And that's generally how you should do it, but there's probably some algs out there you could go learn if you really wanted to, but... In this case, I'm going to just insert that, rotate, and then solve, uh, as that's the most intuitive way to do it, but there are probably algs you could use to do the 1 or the 0. Basically, you just you use the principles that I showed you in the 3 and the 2 case, so you insert a bad edge, and then you put the other bad edge in front, and then you do a sledgehammer to orient them, and then you proceed to solve the next case. Now, if you're really smart with this, you can use these intuitive solutions to try and influence your last pair. So we can all agree that this is not a very good F2L case to have for your last slot, or any slot for that matter. Um, so we'll try to use our sledgehammers, which we're going to use to uh, orient these edges, to mess up this pair and change it. So we'll do a sledgehammer, and that oriented too, and then this got inserted. And it looks like if we do another sledgehammer, it'll actually pair them up kind of odd. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. I don't know much about uh, how <laughs> how if do all pairs get influenced by sledgehammers, but you could do some, some work in that field, and you could figure out how to influence it. And this is a fairly good case for your last slot. So I find that this intuitive way is a lot easier than learning like a bajillion algorithm for ZBLS, and it can also help influence your last pair. If you enjoy cubing tutorials, unboxings, and other cubing content, subscribe so you don't miss any more of it. Like the video if you did, and comment down below how you hand scramble a cube. Thanks for watching, and I'm going on vacation this week, so don't expect another upload for another week or so. That's all. Bye.